Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about one last bit of combining like terms. Now you'll see this expression written behind me. There's a lot of variables here, right? A lot of variables, a lot of exponents. Well, it's a little intimidating. You know, we've done a couple other videos over combining like terms, and in those, we just have like one variable, maybe an X or a Y, and some whole numbers. Nothing quite like this, like this is crazy. But I wanna do this example to show that as terrifying as this might look, it's not actually that different than what we've been doing. So if you've watched the other videos on combining like terms, you know that my kind of preferred way of starting a problem like this is to identify what terms actually are alike, what terms can be combined. And we said there's two rules to that. You know, we have to have the same variable and that, that variable or variables have to have the same exponents. You know, it's what I like to call the variable configuration. Um, so whenever we look at this very first term, 6x to the third y, the variable configuration here is x to the third and y to the first. So anything that we want to combine with that has to look exactly the same, not just the x to the third, but also the y. All of it has to match, not just one part. So do we have any other terms here that would be able to combine with 6x to the third y? Yeah, right here. We have a 4x to the third y. This is able to combine because it has the exact same variable configuration. X to the third, Y to the first. We may have other terms here that have X's and Y's in them, but that variable configuration is not identical, and it has to be identical. The coefficients, the six and the four, can be whatever we want, the, whatever they are, it doesn't matter. Those can be positives, negatives, whatever number but the variable configuration must match perfectly. So let's take a look at our second term, 5xy to the third. Is there anything that matches that? There is. We have this, and remember it keeps its sign, and then we have one at the very end here, negative xy to the third. Now you may be thinking, those variables look the same but is this still like terms because there's no coefficient? Do they need to have that coefficient to be the same? Well, one, we know the coefficients don't have to be the same for them to combine. The coefficients don't really have a, a impact on being like terms. But do think about this. Does that number have a coefficient? It does. We don't see it, but it does. Because what coefficient is written in front of any variable that just doesn't have one written there? Yeah, it's a 1. It's kind of like how this x. We don't see any exponent written above the x. But does that mean it's to the 0 power? No, because an exponent to the 0 power is, that means that variable doesn't exist, right? That is to the first power. It's that idea of the invisible 1. Right? That whenever we have a variable that does not have a written coefficient, we can assume its coefficient is 1. Or in this case, since there's a minus sign in front of it, a negative 1. Now, I'll go ahead and write that in there just for us to be able to visualize. There we go. So, um, those are like terms, though. Do we have any other like terms here? We have a negative 6y to the third. Now, would that be able to combine with this one? Because there's also a y to the third there, right? Like, we already highlighted these two in orange. They have y to the third. Should this one be in orange, too? No. 
because this has that x to the first. And remember, that variable configuration has to be exact, not just a part of it matching. So this can only match or be at like terms with another y to the third and just y to the third, which we see right here with our positive 5y to the third matches perfectly. Let's go ahead and combine these in our final step. As you guys know uh, from our other videos, if you've watched those or just from more simple combining like terms, the coefficients will do the operation uh, designated, in this case addition because it is a positive four. So six plus four, we are going to get 10 and the variables will not change during addition and subtraction. So 10 x to the third y. Next up, we can look at our other like terms. We have our x, y to the thirds here. Um, five and negative one, so five minus one is going to get us a positive four. And then I'll go ahead and fill in my variables as well. x, y to the third, remain the same. Finally, we have negative six y to the third plus five y to the third. Negative six plus five, is going to end up being negative one. Do we need to write that coefficient of one? No, we don't. We can just leave that as minus y to the third. If you want to write that coefficient there, minus one y to the third, you can. It is not uh, technically incorrect, but this is just another one of those kind of math traditional way of writing things where we don't really need to write a one coefficient. If you have any questions about this, feel free to drop them below. I'll get to those if I have the opportunity. And otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.